Mr. Fred Dixon, to give a warm welcome to his city, New York. So I don't need to stay, right? Thank you. No, right, I'm going to do it at the end. Okay. All right. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everybody. We are so thrilled to have you here in New York City. I cannot tell you how excited we are. And John, we don't want you to leave. We think you should always stay in New York, but I know you have to spread the love. But uh, we are so honored to have you here. We are extra thrilled that uh, IGLTA set an amazing record. That's what happens in New York, I'm happy to say. Uh, we break records here. Um, so 673, I think is the latest count, as John said. 49 countries. I mean, that is remarkable. So thank you all uh, for making the effort to be here with us. Um, we are just beyond honored uh, to be hosting you here this week. And what is really a remarkable year in New York. So I hope you feel the excitement. And I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey, talk a little bit about us, but also talk about uh, why we're all here and a little bit of the, the collective history. But first of all, I do want to congratulate the entire IGLTA team. Um, John has a remarkable group of professionals working for him, and they have put together a fantastic program. Um, and you're going to see this week just a little bit of a glimpse of, of what's going on in New York. I mean, it is in many ways a monumental year for us uh, with all the new openings that are happening, whether it's Hudson Yards, MoMA is expanding by a third, a brand new Statue of Liberty Museum, over 10,000 new hotel rooms. This city is alive and kicking, um, and it just does not seem to stop. But I would be remiss if I go any further without pausing and just thanking my team. I know John just called them out, but I, I do want to thank Reginald Charlo for all the amazing work that he does. Reginald, I'm so proud of you, thank you, for leading the, the charge at the foundation and leading the charge for us in this market. Um, and the rest of our amazing team that are here today. It was team NYC and Company, stand up. Where are you? Where are all my colleagues? Donna and Paul and Chris and Alyssa and Britt and Sarah. I know Nancy's here and Jeanette and Priska over here in the corner. Thank you all. And John Marshall. Thank you very much. I'm super proud of our family. Um, so thank you all for, for all that you have done. So I'm going to uh, walk you a little bit through our journey, uh, give you a little sense of, of where we are today, how we're performing in New York, and the role that you play in that. So um, take a look, and I'll show you that we are happy to now to share that 2018 was another record-breaking year for New York, and you helped that happen. We welcomed an all-time high of 65.1 million visitors last year, uh, comprising 51.5 million domestic and 13.5 uh, million international. Um, that's our ninth consecutive year of growth. So we are on a roll and, and proud of it. Um, we expect to welcome more than 67 million visitors this year uh, and forecasting even further responsible growth in the years ahead. And most importantly of all, our local industry is now supporting over 400,000 jobs in the city of New York. That's the power of tourism and hospitality in this city. Um, and it's one of the fastest growing segments in our local economy. So you're helping us power our city and keeping our families strong. So we want to thank you for that. We also generate now more than $12 billion with a B in taxes a year, it boggles the mind. Um, so tourism truly is working for New York City. And I'm proud to say that New York remains the number one destination in the US for LGBTQ travel. So that is a particular honor uh, that we want to thank you for. And the segment represents 10% of our overall visitation. So that's almost 7 million people this year they are going to come from the LGBT community. Some destinations don't get 7 million visitors in total. So we're super proud of that. And we don't take it lightly. And we work hard to earn your business every day and to earn your respect and your partnership Partnership. Um, and so I want to thank you for that. And thank you for helping us remain uh, number one in the game. In 2019, as you all know, is especially important, of course, due to its uh, important historical relevance. And some of us in this room know it a little bit better than others. But I think it is so important just to take a look back. Um, and in two months from now, we will be celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. So I want to take the time to revisit this memory and look back at what was the breaking point in LGBTQ history that occurred right here in this city on June 28th in 1969. And it's this modern notion of pride, this determination to be ourselves, to love ourselves. Um, that idea was born at 53 Christopher Street in New York City just after 3 a.m. on June 28th, 1969. And the Stonewall Uprising lasted for three days. Um, it was the moment that sparked a worldwide movement. And a year afterwards, on the first anniversary of the Stonewall Riots, a tradition was born from those ashes. That first year, there were marches in Los Angeles and in San Francisco and right here in New York. And in New York, the organizers um, of the one-year anniversary came together under the banner Christopher Street Liberation Day Committee. And the committee wanted to unify the events of the anniversary under a single label. Some had suggested it should be called Gay Power. Um, but a member of the committee named Craig Schoonmaker proposed Gay Pride. Uh, because in his words, there is very little chance for people around the world to have power. 
and many still do not. But everyone can endeavor to, pri to take pride in themselves, and as a result, maybe be a little bit happier as people, and thereby have a greater chance of producing change. That's a powerful idea. And so that day, the word pride was born in conjunction of what we celebrate every year. And the committee voted unanimously um, that pride would be the theme of the events, and it has endured the test of time. And Craig summed it up simply in an interview a few years ago by saying, the poison we are addressing is shame, and the antidote is pride. And that's a powerful, powerful idea. So the LGBT community gathered to mark what happened that weekend to make sure that the world never forgot and to encourage others to find a sense of pride and self-esteem and to demonstrate that the fight for equality will never end. Uh, and three years ago, President Obama declared the site of the riots in the adjacent park as the Stonewall National Monument. And in that moment, we find our shared history. So we want to honor it by embracing the values and its message in our tourism experience. So in 2017, when we officially announced that World Pride was coming to New York City, our team found a, a unique opportunity to rethink New York City's position in relation to the LGBTQ travel market and to look at what we could do and, more importantly, what we should do. And one of the first things we did was to refresh um, our, our marketing. When you take a look at the map of the West Village and you zero in on Stonewall in the Memorial Park, you notice that it is in the shape of a shard. In seeking inspiration for a mark to brand our new work, our creative team kept coming back to this historic place and to this map and to this image that it evokes. A piece of glass shattered perhaps during those tumultuous days in 1969, but out of which something beautiful was born, this tradition of pride. And as we began to tinker with this idea, um, design elements started to come together and shards of glass could be seen as crystal forms, each individual, no two alike, reflecting the spectrum of the rainbow when seen in the light. Crystalline forms are organic and each grow uniquely to fill space over time, defying constraint and boundaries, just like our human spirit. So we gave ourselves permission to color outside the lines, as our creative director likes to say, and to seek a modern and fresh approach for this notion of uncontainable pride. And a new adaptation of our logo was born in its honor, and we call it Pride Uncontained. So the campaign manifesto, and I always get teary-eyed when I read this, so you have to excuse me, uh, really recognizes that moment and place and time and calls those events forward to today um, to unite us all in uncontained pride. And it goes like this. One hot summer night, a gay club was busted again. Patrons and employees were dragged into the streets as they had been many times in many clubs and in many cities. This was not news, and it wasn't any other night. Uh, if it was any other night, the world wouldn't bat an eye. But this wasn't any other night or any other club or any other city. This was June 28, 1969. This was Stonewall. This was New York City, island of misfits and safe harbor to the world. The place where all fragments of humanity collide, too close to hide, too fast to stand still, and it was our breaking point. In the year that followed, our disparate yet determined struggles coalesced, finally, into a global force. Protests turned to pride, and New York City took its place in our history. Something shattered that night in 1969, and out of the pieces came something infinitely more beautiful. Its impact irreversible, the truth undeniable, our pride uncontainable. It's a powerful emotion, and now all the credit goes to our creative team for, for the incredible work that they do, and it's so profound. And they took time to interview people in the community, to talk to the veterans that were there at Stonewall, to talk to the historians, to get the story of what happened, and, and I think they captured it quite beautifully. And uh, I know Miguel Sanz is here, my dear friend from Madrid. We took inspiration from him, um, and a special shout out to his entire team for the amazing work they did in hosting World Pride in 2017. And when we were in his city, he invited us to come during the handover ceremony and meet with the mayor's office and to learn how they hosted World Pride in Madrid, and they did such a beautiful job. Um, so I want to thank him for that. But we took a few pages from his playbook and brought him back to New York, um, and we we're making an effort to paint the town proud this year for Stonewall's 50th anniversary. That's why we've launched Project Rainbow, a large-scale branding initiative that aims to welcome visitors during World Pride Month across the five boroughs. And the Project Rainbow Toolkit, which we have now distributed across all five boroughs, um, includes assets designed to help businesses get ready to welcome all those that will be here. You've already heard we're expecting an excess of four million people. Um, and for example, gender neutral bathroom signage is one of the ideas that we are putting out widely into the marketplace, just as you see here at the Hilton today. Yes, I think we can applaud that. 
Because here in New York City, safe and equal bathroom access is a human right. And since March of 2016, restaurants, bars, and other public places in New York City with a single stall restroom have been required to replace men and women signage with gender neutral signage. And one, and one of the pieces you see here, of course, and it's one of the ones I'm most excited about, are the window clings that we're distributing are to every business in the five boroughs tens of thousands of businesses citywide in partnership with MasterCard, our global partner, um, to welcome World Pride travelers with a very simple message, and that is that everyone is celebrated here. Acceptance matters. And so you're going to see this throughout the entire city of New York in June. We're super proud of it. And Miguel, thank you for the spark that, that helped us get here today. We really appreciate it. And our goal is to see the entire business community take part in showing the world all that makes New York City the exciting and welcoming destination that it is. And with this message, I'll share with you our invitation to come back in June. I am strong. I am hilarious. I'm proud. I'm German. And I'm Romanian. I am American. Human. I am a friend. I'm a mother. Brother. A lover. I am the Bronx. Brooklyn. Queens. Manhattan. I am Staten Island. I am a New Yorker. We're united. Resilient. We're persistent. We are better together. 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 Equals. We are one community. One world. One pride. Together, we are one. 2019 marks 50 years. 50 years of resilience. In 2019, let's unite in pride. Join us for World Pride in New York City. Invited the world, and, and they are coming uh, with upwards of four million uh, to be here in the month of June. We saw a unique opportunity to really create programming around what we're calling the Year of Pride. So, whether big events are your thing, and you want to be here for the excitement at the end of June with four million other people, um, or you'd rather come at another time of the year and enjoy the rich history and heritage um, and extraordinary offerings of New York City, we encourage you to explore the entire Year of Pride. And it's a year-long program of events comprising special cultural exhibitions and an abundance uh, of uh, rich offerings uh, available throughout the five boroughs, celebrating New York City's rich and diverse LGBTQ plus history, arts, and culture. And I'm going to just mention just a few of these uh, and put these on your calendar. Um, through January 2020, the Guggenheim Museum, for example, is presenting Implicit Tensions, Maplethorpe Now, a two-phase exhibition of the late photographer Robert Maplethorpe's work. Phase one highlights works in the museum's collection, including photographs, mixed media, portraits, and more, while the second phase will spotlight artists who draw inspiration uh, from his work. And last month, the New York Public Library debuted Love and Resistance, Stonewall 50, drawing from its vast collection of LGBTQ history, including materials from the Manuscripts and Archives Division and Photography Collection. The exhibit on view in the library's landmark Stephen Schwartzman Building in Bryant Park is organized around four themes, resistance, bars, in print, and love. Um, Art After Stonewall on view April 24th through July 21st at the Leslie Lohman Museum of Gay and Lesbian Art, the only one in the world, is the first major exhibition to highlight the impact of LGBTQ civil rights movements um, on the world. And the exhibit will feature more than 150 works of art and related materials from LGBTQ artists, including Keith Haring, Holly Hughes, Robert Maplethorpe, Andy Warhol, and more. And this one is really exciting. You know the big Met Gala that happens every year, right? Well, the Metropolitan Museum of Art's Costume Institute Spring Exhibition is going to be called Camp Notes on Fashion. On view May 9th through September 8th, exploring the origins of the camp aesthetic, the exhibition will feature approximately 175 objects, including women's wear and men's wear as well as sculptures, paintings, and drawings dating from the 17th century to today. And that gala runway is going to be, uh, and red carpet, is going to be one amazing show this year with this theme, I can tell you. And from May 24th through September 22nd, the New York Historical Society, and those of you on the board uh, of both the Foundation and Association were with us for dinner there last night, uh, will commemorate the 50th anniversary of Stonewall uh, with two new exhibits, Letting Loose and Fighting Back, LGBTQ Nightlife Before and After Stonewall, and By the Force of Our Presence, highlights from the Lesbian Her Story Archives, all as part of its Stonewall 50 programming. And a new one uh, that was just added to the calendar uh, is borrowing its title from the rallying words of transgender artist and activist Marsha P. Johnson, Nobody Promised You Tomorrow, aims to expand understanding of the Stonewall uprising beyond the image of protesters in the streets to consider the everyday acts that reinforce, reinforce such public activism, and that will be at the Brooklyn Museum of Art May 3rd through December the 8th. In addition to these exhibits, visitors and locals can look forward to more than 
seven weeks. I think we're the only city in the world that celebrates such a long pride calendar. Seven weeks of pride celebrations across every borough, across every ethnicity, every cultural enclave in the city of New York, um, in all five boroughs, starting May 10th with Staten Island Pride Fest and concluding with the New York City Pride March on June 30th. These events offer an unparalleled opportunity to experience our boroughs and neighborhoods at their very best. And you can see some highlights here on the screen. Staten Island Pride Fest, as I said, is May 10th through 18. Harlem Pride, May 31 through June 29. Uh, Queen's Pride is on June 2nd, the Brooklyn Twilight Pride Parade on June 8th, and the Bronx Pride Festival on June 23rd, and much, much more. And of course, World Pride itself, which will take place in late June. Here are some of the official key events that you don't want to miss. If you're coming that week, June 24th and 25th is the Human Rights Conference. June 26th is the opening ceremony at the Barclays Center, which will be hosted by Whoopi Goldberg and Cindy Lauper. Uh, June 28th, Stonewall 50th Commemoration Rally, uh, which will happen on Christopher Street. Um, June 29th um, is, of course, Pride Island and the Pier Dance, uh, headlined this year by Grace Jones. June 30th is the official Pride March itself. It's expected to be upwards of 12 hours. Uh, it's going to be record setting, probably the largest Pride Parade in the world. Um, Pride Island and Pride Fest will be that evening with the artists yet to be announced, so you know it's going to be big. Uh, and then cl the closing ceremony is that evening in Times Square. It's the first time ever we will have shut down Times Square for Pride. So we're really thrilled about that. That's going to be a global celebration on the stage. We're hoping uh, also for a global audience and perhaps even a televised uh, broadcast of that event. So it's going to be exciting. And finally, I'd like to take one final opportunity to celebrate how New York City is welcoming to all types of communities all year long, as only New York City can. So take a look at our new welcome video, which is available for everyone to use. All right, Dorothy, this is it. I'm home. You get off the plane and you're like, wow, oh, I'm alive. As soon as you land, take a cab. You can bike if you have a bike. You can skate. Why would you have a cab if you can walk? Walking is a, is a thing. You can take the boat. First of all, when you go to Times Square, you have to breathe because it's breathtaking. Take a selfie. Go see a Broadway show. Go to the Empire State Building. Go to the top of Rockefeller Center. Skyscrapers is the center of the world. And not just near York. There are so many tall buildings. Where is the sun? In house kitchen, you can see the sun. We've got every season here. Go see the Rockettes. The Statue of Liberty. Stonewall, which is incredibly historic. Comedies where revolutions happen. Chelsea, Soho. Hay cosas ya de lujo. Es un área bien fancy. When you come here, you expect glamour. Diamonds, glamorous dress. Go to the opera. Why go over the Brooklyn Bridge? Brooklyn is epic and special. Brooklyn. Got Coney Island. You get to happen upon things. Yes. You can get reggae, you can get soca, you can get Brazilian music. And the band was popping. House music. Just the idea of people still gathering and costuming. I mean, you don't get this anymore. You get to a certain block in Brooklyn, put your foot over, and you're in Queens. The Rockaway is the beach, Question Metal Park. They got the Mets over there. Small places that you never think exist. From there, we're going to the Bronx. Nature. The Guam Zoo, and they got the Yankees. I think that's baseball, right? <laughs> Manhattan never gets out of class, and that's because of theater. Staten Island. Staten Island, there's something for everybody. New York City is an awesome place to come with family. You got things for kids, you got things for adults. Even like museums have amazing story time. The train in New York. You start off with a showtime experience, then you'll see a couple falling in love. The subway street dancing. It's like this tiny universe. Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, three dollars. Take a ride on the subway. And then, my dear, I want to people watch. Saw a lady walking with a pig. All types of characters. The guy get out of her cab with a duck, and we were just all like looking at him like, what the? Go and get some pizza. <laughs> the reason why pizza is so good in the city, New York water is the best. Tap. You must try halal food. Oh, the high-end, the fine dining. You'll certainly get passion, whether it's a food truck or a high-end restaurant. It's heaven for me. <laughs> Sometimes it's just about the love in the hands that makes the food. Go to Little Italy and have a beautiful Italian dessert. If you want real Italian food, go to Arthur Avenue, Bronx. Mock Street, great dim sum. That's Chinese food. General Taos chicken. I even don't know who that guy is. <laughs> I 
think it's easy to be lost, but you can always ask questions. I think the thing is to get lost in New York City. I think you can really bring your culture to New York and preserve it. That's the beauty of this organic city. And New York really promotes self-expression. It creates new flavors of what once was coming from another country. You got different kinds of ages, race, religions, LGBTQ. You put your dog in a stroller? I don't know, A, B, C, D, F, you a pirate? Z. Ahoy, lady! <laughs> All of you, everyone's welcome. The biggest rainbow in the world. I could leave my apartment house at 7 a.m. wearing a sequin wedding gown. And the doorman will say, good morning. <laughs> That's New York. <laughs> So that's New York. I hope you brought your sequin wedding gown with you or your dog in the stroller. Everyone is welcome. So with that, I'd like to just take one second and invite John Tenzella and Juan Hule to come up because you guys were so supportive of us over the last year. We have a little gift of thank you for both of you. It's our symbol. Uh, it, is the, it is the Big Apple and it's from Tiffany's. So who doesn't like, who doesn't like a blue box, right? Everybody likes a blue box. Where's our photographer? Here we go. Come on up here, guys. So you can't come to New York and not go home without a blue box from Tiffany. So Juan, thank you for your support over the last year. Thank you. And John, thank you, sir. That's a great guy. Uh, come on. Photo, we got to pose. We got to pose now, Juan. Uh, yeah. All right, here we go. You ready? <laughs> Thank you, New York. Thank yes. You. Thank you guys so thank much. You, thank you. Thank you very much.